welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is celebrating our 20th anniversary of bringing you the Gulf Coast's finest chefs cooking their delicious recipes with natural gas. This show is brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Clean, efficient, natural gas. And now, Coastal Cooking. My guest today is corporate chef Greg McCarthy from the Grand Marlin Restaurant on Pensacola Beach. Hi, Carmela. Great to see you. It is so good to have you back with more Grand Marlin recipes. You know, I love doing this spot. I know. It's wonderful. It's fun. Tell us what you'll well, be preparing today. Well, we're going to start out with today, which is on our menu at the Grand Marlin, is a tuna poke. Tuna, uh, tuna poke is basically a Hawaiian version of a tuna tartare. Okay. And uh, poke literally means to cut or to slice. And um, so... What we have is we have a couple components. We have some crispy rice crackers that we're going to go ahead and fry off right mm -hmm. now. Uh, then we have some beautiful number one ahi tuna. From Hawaii. From, yeah, we have just flown in from Honolulu, actually. Wow. Um, and we have some avocado, and we have some great uh, Asian spices to go in there. It okay? sounds so healthy. Uh, it is, actually is. And if yeah. you use, if you use uh, like tamari or a gluten-free soy sauce, you could actually have this as a gluten-free dish also. Oh, great. Well, what we're going to do right now is we're going to fry these rice crackers. I buy these at an Asian market around here, mm -hmm. and they're they're um, they're they're really hard um, to the touch until you fry them, and they come out really light, fluffy, mm -hmm. and crispy like this. And these are sesame seeds. These are black sesame seeds. Okay. Um, That's going to make for a beautiful presentation, it, it, it's, isn't it? It's, well, it's such a unique accompaniment yes. to this dish. Um, see how quickly they fry out. Yeah. And look how pretty. Of course, if you're going to do this at home, you want to be extra careful when you're mm -hmm. working with hot oil, but uh, it's extremely quick, and that's it right there. They, they just kind of fluff up and, mm -hmm. and light, puffy, and crispy. We're going to just take I those out they, of the fryer. Uh, they probably taste real light, too, don't they? They, they taste extremely light. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a great way to eat this little pokey because it doesn't, it works, it doesn't overpower the tuna because really what you're trying to do here yeah. is you're trying to taste the tuna. What we're going to do now is we're going to take and we're going to do our avocado. You hear them? They're still yep, cracking. Yeah, I do. Okay. Now, this is the way I dice an avocado. I think, um, you know, to pre-dice it, they turn, they turn um, brown on you. Mm -hmm. They oxidize real quickly. Mm -hmm. So basically, take it, take it out like that. And when you want to remove the seed, you just take your knife, twist it out. Well, look at Very that. Very simple. Be careful not to cut yourself. Mm -hmm. There you go. You set that aside. Okay. That is a beautiful avocado too. It is. I always hit or miss this is, with avocados. Well, you know, they come in they come in unripe most of yeah, the time. Right. And then we kind mm -hmm. of just leave them in our dry storage and, and they kind of ripen up mm -hmm. over over time. So you get them perfectly to where you want them. And then I just kind of slice it down like this. Be careful not to go through the skin because you'll cut yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to have perfect diced avocado, aren't you? My, my instructors <laughs> at school would have been proud. <laughs> Look how easy there that you go. is. That's it. Okay. Uh huh. All right, we're gonna set this here, and what what I have here is just a little bit of lime juice and a little bit of sesame oil, and what that does is it keeps it keeps it fresh, and it keeps it green, because you don't want it to oxidize. So it's got lime juice and sesame lime, oil. Lime okay. juice and sesame oil. Little salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go too heavy on that because you have uh, soy sauce here. Okay. And of course. The soy sauce is pretty salty. So we're going to set this aside for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our poke sauce. Poke sauce. Poke sauce. Is this that is Hawaiian a, too? Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's a thousand, it's like steak tartare, there's a thousand different versions. You know, probably every family mm -hmm. has their own, you know, yes. uh, version. But this is mine that I developed. And um, we're just going to take a little sesame oil. I'm sorry, soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Now a little bit of sesame oil. Not much, because the sesame oil is very strong. Uh, it's very fragrant. Mm -hmm. uh, rice wine vinegar, to kind of cut that a little bit. We have some spicy chili. This is called sambal. Oh, sambal And it's sambal a spicy chili, chili, yes. chili It's paste. very good, though. It is. It's wonderful. A little bit of sugar, kind of give you that sweet and sour mm -hmm. with the rice vinegar. Sweet, sour, and salty. Spicy. There's a science to all this, isn't it? Yeah, there really is. It, you know, it's a, you know, it's, it's the way things roll across your tongue. Yes. And, and uh, all the the certain flavors. Yep. Uh, they marry, but yet sometimes you can even tell so that's individually how simple that is. what's in there. That's how simple. Very nice. All right. 
Now what we're going to do is we have this beautiful tuna. We're going to go ahead beautiful. and we're going to slice it. You know what I look forward to when you're on the show? What's that? Your presentations. Oh, thank you. They are you know, a work people, of art. People eat with their eyes. They sure do. And, you know, you can, you can take the, the best tasting dish and mm -hmm. have a really terrible presentation and people will think less of it. Or you can have a so-so dish right. and have it look beautiful mm -hmm. and people absolutely love it. So, you know, of course, you know, we never strive for that. We well, it's part of the dining experience. I mean, if I made this dish at home, it certainly probably wouldn't look like you're going to make it. But, you know. The, that's why you have to come to the Grand Marlin That's together. right. <laughs> because when you do go to a restaurant, that's part of the dining that's right. experience there. Well, sure. Getting that food and looking absolutely. at it and enjoying it before you dig in. So. so um, just a dice. Very important co component. Oops. And, you know, I think tuna, especially of this quality, is best raw. And if you're going to sear mm -hmm. it, just sear it very, very lightly. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take it in, put it in our bowl. Right here. Drizzle that on top. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a little salt and pepper, not too much again. We're going to mix that up. And what we're going to add to it here, we have some diced cucumber and cilantro. And like I said, oh. you could add, from here you could add little diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You could add um, uh, sesame seeds. You know, there's a lot you could add mm -hmm. from here. There's, uh, some people do this with a mayonnaise base, like a sriracha mayonnaise. Um, but you I, could I just, really I like change this. up this dish, you could. You could. You could make this whatever you want to mm -hmm. make it. It's very, very simple. Okay, so we have our poke. You know, you want to let that marinate for a little while, okay. but not too much. With tuna, very, as, as little marination as possible because okay. you want to get that fresh, fresh tuna. Right. You don't want to lose that taste, no. huh? Okay, so our assembly, we have one of these nifty little PVC pipes. Of course, it's been sanitized, don't you? Yeah, don't you came up with that. Come, well, it didn't come from uh, Gaslight. Uh, <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying that, you know, that's, it's perfect. Somebody yeah. must have been desperate one day, you know? Not uh, me. Went out in the garage and found <laughs> it and cleaned it up. Okay, so we're going to put our avocado in here first. And yep. basically what we're going to do is just make like a little, a little mold. Mm -hmm. Here comes that presentation. Presentation. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and spoon our tuna in. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. mm. I can't wait to taste this. I might mm -hmm. have to take a bite during the commercial break. Okay. What do you think? All right, we're gonna kind of pack it in there. Mm-hmm. So it stands up. And then you see the nice little layers. That's right. Can mm -hmm. you take that off? There we go. Hopefully it stands up. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Look at that. Got one little jumper here. That's okay. It's okay. That's gorgeous. All right. Now we're going to garnish the dish. Okay. We have a little bit of red chili oil mm -hmm. that we're just going to kind of drizzle around. You don't want to go too heavy with this oil. And then what we do is we take and we dry out some lime zest and mix it with some sea salt. Okay. So we just take lime, a zester and then kind of let it just, just dry out by itself. We put it under the heat lamp if we need mm -hmm. to you know, get it going a little bit and mix it with uh, sea salt. And it takes on that nice little limey flavor. Just kind of sprinkle That's that around. Unique, uh, when you eat it, what you want to do, what you want to do is kind of, you know, scrape it down through that salt, through that oil onto your rice cracker. Mm. We have some toasted macadamia nuts. This is quite Hawaiian. It is. <laughs> Isn't it? It is. I love it. Okay. And then we're going to just take these rice crackers. Kind of boom. Break off a little piece. You can you know, stick it mm -hmm. right up on top. Yeah. You know what? I don't want to ruin that beautiful That's presentation. That's right. We've got to keep that thing together. And there we have <gasps> it. 
Oh, Lee from the Grand Marlin. Oh, I am poke. Beautiful. We've got two more great dishes coming up. Yes, we And do. we have a special announcement that we're going to wait till the end of the show. Absolutely. So you have to watch the whole show to find we'll out. keep them on the edge of their seats. That's right, what that special <laughs> announcement is. But we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back after this. Fantastic. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer. And you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. We are ready to start our next dish from the Grand Marlin. All right, we are going to do, you know what's really becoming very popular and, and uh, is a Nashville hot fried chicken sandwich. Mm. And it's been on my menu for uh, probably the last six months. But now you're starting to see it crop up in a lot uh -huh. of different places. And so I got this idea from, from Nashville, obviously. It's, a, it's kind of a famous dish of uh, hot fried chicken where they, mm -hmm. they marinate a very, very spicy uh, buttermilk marinade. And then uh, when it comes out of the fryer, they just toss it with all these hot, hot spices, which I'll explain here in a yeah. minute. But right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our, our chicken frying. Okay. okay. So that's what it means by hot fried chicken. Yeah. It is spicy yeah, hot. Yeah, it is spicy hot. And so season salt and pepper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into some seasoned flour. Mm -hmm. All purpose. All, yeah, and then I have some garlic in here. I have um, white pepper, I have salt. Um, and uh, I put a, actually a little cornstarch in here because cornstarch really kind of crisps up very well. Really? Yeah. So we're gonna shake off that excess. We're gonna go into some buttermilk. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to be good. It is going to be delicious. Okay, you want to roll that around pretty good. You could you could let it marinate in this buttermilk, too. You could season it with a little bit of hot hot uh, pep. Depending on your, your taste level, you mm -hmm. could season it with a little bit of hot uh, pepper, uh, like Tabasco or something like that. It goes so back in the flour. Back in the flour with a good liberal coat here. Mm -hmm. Make that good crust. Good crust. Mm. Okay. And, and hot oil. Yes, your, 350 oil degree hot. oil. Uh, you could do this in a pan. Uh, you know, you'd want to give yourself a good, good amount of oil mm -hmm. in the pan. Or you could do it if you have one of these little tabletop fryers, which I think are wonderful uh, for, you know, fish, chicken at the house. Yes. I suggest you do it outside so you don't have all those, uh, that grease smell in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and drop it in the fryer. Okay. And then what we're going to do is make sure that's swimming around pretty good. Uh -huh. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to prep our bun. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so we have our, um, we use a pretzel bun for this. And uh, I love the flavor that it gets. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to toast that just on a, on a skillet with a little bit of butter. And we're going to set this aside for now. What we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of honey mustard slaw. Okay. This is iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce, and we're going to take our famous honey mustard that we mm. use at the restaurant and give that a good toss. And what I, this chicken is so spicy that the slaw kind of, you know, Cuts calms it, it down. Mm -hmm. um, it's sweet. It's got a little bit of um, uh, vinegar in it, mayonnaise. Uh, so it gives it a nice little uh, cutting action to this hot spice. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make our, our hot mixture that goes on the chicken. And for this, we take a little bit of clarified butter. Although, I'll tell you, in Nashville, <laughs> they just take some of that fryer oil, put oh, that really? in there with these spices. The spices, cayenne oh. pepper. I use smoked paprika, uh -huh. garlic, uh, a little bit of um, onion powder, salt sugar mm -hmm. again you're getting that spicy you're getting that sweet right and we're going to go ahead and just mix that in there so this and is going make, on the chicken this is going on the chicken okay so you see that nice little paste oh yes kind of a wet like rub yep. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so we're gonna, this now we're going to take out this beautiful chicken breast oh fried to perfection oh my god it came out beautiful just dab that here all right now, this is going to be quite a sandwich. This is I'm a great you. sandwich. Okay. Now, depending on how hot you like it <laughs> okay. or not, but I'm going to go ahead and make it hot. Okay? All right. So there is a lot of cayenne in here and a lot of smoked paprika in it. I love that smoky spiciness that it gets. Look at that glaze that goes on there. 
Yes. Oh, okay, this well, is going to be so different. I used it all, so you better be ready. Okay. Okay. I have my bottle of water nearby. <laughs> there you go. We'll set this aside. Okay, time to assemble the sandwich. Very simply, some mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. On the top part of the bun. And at the Grand Marlin, we, we make these, these pickles. Uh, I brine my own pickles. They're kind of a dill pickle, a little mm -hmm. sour again. Uh, it's like a three-day brine to those. Mm. Okay. Now we're going to take our chicken. Oops, I'm sorry. We're going to take our honey mustard slaw. Kind of pile that on there real good. I love the flavors you're combining you know, in this. This is not a dainty little sandwich. Mm -hmm. This is this is a messy a messy little thing. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take and we're going to top it like that. Oh, look, you're right. Now, how do you eat this, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> I would cut it in half. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll cut it in half. And then That's we'll great. do our plate presentation. And you know, the uh, pretzel bread has such a good texture, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And what we'll do is we're going to, I don't have toothpicks, so we're just going to have to. Put it like that, show. Oh, and homemade potato chips. we make potato homemade chips? potato chips at the Grand Marlin. <gasps> We're just going to go ahead and put some of those, pile them up. What a unique dish. There you go. You Nashville, Nashville chicken. Nashville hot fried chicken. I love it. Well, let's okay. put it up to our, Alrighty. our other dish. And when we come back, we've got one of your pasta dishes. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do some blackened scallops and... Uh, uh, with a jambalaya pasta. Oh, sounds great. You don't want to miss that. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Heating water with electricity versus natural gas can cost twice as much. And tankless natural gas water heaters can add even more savings. So don't get soaked with higher energy costs. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. A special pasta dish is next. Yeah, we're going to do a um, Cajun seared scallop uh, over a jambalaya pasta with penne. <gasps> okay. Sounds good. Yes. Just from the name, it sounds Just, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like to, uh, you know, keep, keep local. Uh -huh. We have some andouille sausage that we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to, to cook out. Andouille's fully cooked, but I just like to brown it up. Right. Get some nice color on mm -hmm. it. And, um, you know, it's kind of a spicy little, spicy little dish. You know, again, you know, personal preference, however mm -hmm. spicy you want to make it. Well, Greg, you've got some great fish dishes, of course, on your mm -hmm. menu, but that's not all. You've got oh, no, we did pasta dishes, we have, I'll tell you steak. What, we, we have uh, our Sunday uh, special for prime rib. We yes. do some of the best prime rib in the area, and yes, it's, it's $20 um, for a beautiful 12-ounce mm -hmm. cut of prime rib. Mm -hmm. We do, uh, I think, one of the best chicken dishes. It's, you know, all-natural organic chicken with some local mm -hmm. vegetables um, on a uh, root vegetable puree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, yeah, it's not just fish. No. But of course, that's what we specialize in. Well, you got some of the best fish. Thank this you. is a scallop dish. This so. is a scallop dish, and these are from New Bedford, Massachusetts. So uh, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to... Hit it with some garlic, mm -hmm. and of course, everybody loves garlic. I'm going to throw in some jalapenos, give it a little bit more spice, some celery, some onion. Now, celery, onion, and peppers is called the Trinity in, right. in, in a, a Cajun and Creole cooking. So you're going to find those in most every dish that they do. And your tricolor peppers that add so yeah, I, much you know, color. Yeah, I love the color. I do too. And we're just going to go ahead and you know let this sweat down a little bit. Turn the heat up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to let that sweat for a minute. We're going to go hear, ahead. I hear you're cooking with natural gas at the restaurant. We are. Uh, yeah, as of uh, uh, about a year or two ago, we uh, got natural gas on the island. How about that. And um, we love it. I bet you we do. We love it. It's um, you know. Uh, it, it's so hot, it's immediate mm -hmm. heat, you know, that yep. a chef really needs to rely on. Mm -hmm. And you use that flame for a lot, don't you? What's that? The flame? 
Yep. The gasoline mm -hmm. can be used, uh, you know, sweating red, red peppers, bell peppers, mm -hmm. and all kinds of things. So what we have here is we have some uh, Cajun uh, spice. It's kind of a blackening spice. I'm not actually going to blacken this because we'd fill this room up with right. smoke. So <laughs> I'm going to try and go a little bit easier here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get those in the pan. And turn the heat up on that too. You can see they're starting to sizzle a little bit. Mm -hmm. We just want to kind of... How do you anything. know when scallops are done? When the edges start to crack. Okay, that's a good yeah. indication. And, and you don't want to overcook them. Uh, again, there's very little fat in there. They're and like rubber. They're, yeah, you if, you, if you overcook them, you're gonna absolutely mm -hmm. just turn it to rubber. They're right. hard. People say, oh, they're fishy. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you cook them perfectly, they're velvety, they're translucent inside, mm -hmm. and this packed full Delicious. of flavor. Absolutely. Yep. So you look for the cracks on the side. Yeah. Very good. They don't good take that long. Information. Okay. Now, going back to our pasta, we're uh -huh. gonna put a little bit of chicken stock in here. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of diced tomato. Canned tomatoes are fine. Not the, not the juice, just the tomato itself. Mm -hmm. Drain that off. You can hear the sizzle of our scallops going. Yeah. They're doing very nicely here. Let's take a look here. Now I'm going to go ahead a little bit further on those. Okay. And while our pasta's going here. Give it a shake and stir, get all those flavors going together. Uh -huh. That andouille sausage is kind of throwing out some of that nice spicy fat that's in there. It's so good. And you have just celebrated your five year anniversary. We have. We had five five years. I mean I like can't that. Believe I can't it. believe you know, it. It seems so much longer since you've been there. Yeah. <laughs> well I've had those long days, that's for sure. <laughs> but you said it's gone by so quickly. It has, it has gone by. And I'll tell you what, we can't thank um, the locals enough. Yeah. I mean they've come out, they've supported us and uh, through the lean years too. Huh? Yeah, you know, there, it was tough in the beginning, you know, we had the oil spill right in the beginning. Yes, but, I remember that. You know, that, that gave us a chance to really kinda, mm -hmm. you know, bring the locals in and mm -hmm. get to know them. Well, and that's the best course, time for, you know, locals to enjoy the beach is not only in the summertime, but gosh, in the off season. Oh, yeah. Oh. If things quiet down. Things and, quiet down. You know, you know the crowds um, are gone. It's a great time. You know, and uh, we're, you're always going to get great things at the Grand Marlin, mm -hmm. but, you know, yeah. we have that little extra time in the off season that we can kind of really make sure that everybody's so well taken yes. care of. Yes. Okay, back to our pasta. It's coming down very nicely. We're it just going to put a little bit of cream in there. Not like an Alfredo, but this is kind of more of a tomato cream, if you will. Mm -hmm. Scallops are looking just absolutely gorgeous here. Okay, gonna let that come down. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit this with a little bit of our blackening Creole spice. We make ours oh. at the restaurant. Uh, we make everything at the Grand Marlin uh, mm -hmm. in-house. Fresh, don't you? Absolutely, mm -hmm. it's so important. You know it so makes important. a difference. Well, you know, it's, it's, what, it's what we're about. I mean, mm -hmm. cooking is, a, is from the heart. Yes, and, it is. And, you know, if it's what you love to do, you know, you'd never want to go out mm -hmm. and, and, you know, buy, uh, you know, things that are inferior. You know, we right. want the best. Yes. Okay, that's, that's looking beautiful right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead. We're going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese in here. A lot of Parmesan cheese in here. Mm -hmm. Very nice. More the better. Uh-huh. We've got to season everything with salt and pepper. Parmesan cheese is kind of salty, so you don't want to go too, too heavy. Mm -hmm. But you want to make up for that pasta, because that'll kind of take up, soak up a lot of that flavor. I have some penne pasta that we had uh, cooked off previously. I'm going to toss that in here. There you go. One that pan dish. Enough. And it's Very so quick. Very nice. It sure is. While you finish this up, I'm going to give everyone our telephone number. Okay. Fantastic. If you would like written copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website, www.coastalcooking.com. Okay, so our pasta is ready to go, looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everything is, all the flavors have come together. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go. Right, it up, bring all those colors to the top, mm -hmm. so you got a nice visual. Then we're going to take our scallops. Look at this. See how yes, they're beautifully cooked? Yes, and I cooked. see where they're cracked on okay. the side. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead and 
these around like this. That just sets this pasta dish off, doesn't okay. it? Okay. A little bit of Parmesan cheese first. Mm -hmm. Not too much, you know. Um, there's, uh, there's no rules anymore, but you know, they would tell you that uh, cheese and fish don't go together, but who, who doesn't have Parmesan cheese on That's a pasta? Right. A little bit of chopped parsley, green onion in there. And voila. And there you have that it. Is clean up beautiful. this edge right here. And we have a look at our three dishes. Cajun Sear Scallop Pasta. Marlin. Let's put it right up front here. All right. Turn that off for you. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, we, we need a drum roll or something to announce some good news. Okay, well, the Grand Marlin is going to be opening a second location in Panama City Beach. Yay! Anticipate early, late spring, early summer opening. Oh, that is wonderful. They are going to welcome you with open arms. Well, we're really, really excited. We can't wait to get over there again. Yeah. Like the Grand Marlin here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going we're gonna to look to a great local following, make sure that we mm -hmm. take care of our locals as well as our tourists the way we do. You sure. Know? And um, so we're very excited. We can't wait to get over there. And uh, it's going to be an exciting new restaurant. It's going to be um, a seafood restaurant, just mm -hmm. another Grand mm -hmm. Marlin. And you're on the water. And we're directly on the water. Okay, with, with, uh, can't get any docks. better than that. Yeah, yeah. That is such good yeah. news. Well, we certainly uh, want everyone to enjoy the Grand Marlin on Pensacola Beach. Of and course. tell everyone where you're located and your hours. We are located right across, the, you come over the Bob Sykes Bridge, mm -hmm. and you look to the left, there's a big, big building right there. Yes. First thing on the water that you see is the Grand Marlin. Mm -hmm. You go through the toll booth, take your first left, and you'll circle back on the service mm -hmm. road. And we are open seven days a week, lunch and dinner, and Sunday brunch. Sunday brunch. Yeah. Okay, and you yeah. open at 11 for lunch, We open at right? 11 for lunch and okay. 9 o'clock for, for uh, we close at dinner. And listen, outdoor dining, that is outdoor breathtaking. Outdoor dining on the North Drop Bar. Yes, and, beautiful. You know, right now it's uh, fully, fully weatherproof. So if it's cold, we have the vinyl okay. that we drop and it's heated space. And in the summer, it's wide open. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just, you can't beat it. No, and you can come by boat. You can, you can. You've got a dock out there. Yes. So, I mean, thank you. you've got everything, something for everybody. You you I'll tell you what. You thought of it all. We, we have thought of it all, and we're thinking about it all for the, our next location, and you'll be able to come by boat there also. Oh, good. And, you, you know, we're, we're, again, we're going to fly in the, the most, you know, beautiful seafood we can mm -hmm. from all over. Wherever it's fresh, that's where we're going to get it from, and that's what we do at the Grand Marlin. Quality lives at the Grand Marlin, doesn't it? And Absolutely. And your uh, service is impeccable. Oh, man, they're great. And your location is great. <laughs> and... A wonderful, wonderful, talented chef well, thank and you staff. Much. Thank you. You couldn't do it without your great staff, could you? Oh, they're 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 terrific. I'll I tell know. you what. You know, whatever the guest mm -hmm. needs, they're right there. Yes. Um, you know, and that's it. Uh, the guest is number one. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we get we, uh, we have to take care of the guests. Absolutely. Well, you have done a marvelous job. Oh, thank thank you. you so much for sharing these special Grand Marlin dishes, and My we pleasure. hope you'll come back. And we hope to see you next week with more coastal cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.